You're out in the wild camping. What happens if you hear a roar? Is it a bear? Now bear with me. I'll explain how to avoid bear attacks while camping. Then I'll move on to some tips about protecting yourself from wild animals. Let's start with a case study. Leah Davis Locan was a 65-year-old woman who was camping near the small town of Ovanda in 2021. The town borders a large forest that has around 1,000 grizzly bears living in it. Anyway, she set up her tent behind a nearby museum building. There was a couple close to her tent. They were also camping. Later in the night, a bear came close to their tents. Lokan heard the bear sniffing her head. Imagine waking up in your tent and hearing a bear huffing at you. Luckily, the couple came to help and they were able to scare the bear away. Lokan had snacks in her tent, which might have been the reason why the bear approached her. She took the food and stacked it in the museum building. She returned to her tent, put a bear spray can at her side and got back to sleep. Around 4 a.m., the couple was woken up by some noises. They saw the bear near Lokan's tent again. They made the animal go away, but it was already too late when the paramedics arrived. Why did the bear come back? What went wrong this time? Firstly, Lokan indeed hid the snacks in the museum building, yet she forgot to get rid of the food bags left on her bike, which was about 10 feet away from her tent. Secondly, she kept two bags in her tent which she had previously put dried blueberries. Naturally, the bags still smelled like berries. The bear returned to the camping area again and found Lokan's tent. Officials said that probably a move Lokan made unintentionally while she was sleeping triggered the animal to act. The reason wasn't clear. Wildlife officials added that if a grizzly bear came close to a tent, campers should stay elsewhere and not return to the tent for the night. So, Lokan's fatal mistake was to return to the tent for the second time. The bear was put to sleep after this event when it was caught in a nearby hen house. This means improper food storage can have consequences for both animals and people. Would things go differently if Lokan applied the bear muda triangle technique? This technique aims to give people a bear safe camping experience. So probably yes. Barramuda Triangle suggests setting up your tent, kitchen area, and food storage 70 large steps or, to be more precise, 200 feet apart from each other. Bears can smell food from 2 to 3 miles away. That's why the empty blueberry container was sort of like an invitation to the bear in Lokan's case. But even if your food is kept away, a bear may approach your tent to investigate. And if you put your food in a further place, you'll be safe. First, you need to find a safe sleeping area. Your base is supposed to be that spot. It should be outside the triangle, not in the middle. At one vertex of the imaginary triangle, you have your cooking area. At the second one, you have a bear canister. And the last vertex is for the wastewater. Bears are likely to move between these areas. You shouldn't keep any food inside your tent or near your tent. Did you know that a black bear can smell seven times better compared to a bloodhound? It might be surprising, but they can smell things like lip balm and food splattered shirts too. So if you cook wearing one outfit, don't climb into your sleeping bag with the same clothes on and leave your cosmetic products like lip balm in your backpack away from your tent. How to store your food in these areas then? The answer is bear canisters. If you hang your food on a tree in a regular bag, you might not find it there the next day. It's better to store food inside a bear-resistant container. In some camping areas, using bear-resistant food containers is actually mandatory. Bears are smart and motivated animals, especially black bears, because they have become habituated to our food. This means once they've tasted it, they'll want more of it. Bears don't just look for food in camping areas. If you store some food in your car, they can get inside too. Imagine going to a bungalow on a mountain trip and parking your car in the parking lot. The next morning, you go to the car and see that it looks like a car from the Resident Evil game. A bear has bashed the closed windows. Bears can visually recognize and associate food-related stuff like coolers. 
they can damage a car just for a can of soda or sweets. The solution is simple. Don't leave these kinds of items inside your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Can't bears get into RVs too? A typical male black bear weighs around two to 300 pounds, and an average male grizzly is around 600 pounds. So yeah, they can. Luckily, they don't want to be near people unless they're hungry. That's comforting. Bears can come after you if you somehow trigger them though. The solution is, again, putting food-related things away. For example, don't leave your trash outside at night and keep your outdoor stove or grill clean. Motion alarms, too, can be effective to detect intruders. Speaking of motion alarms, I want to mention a newbie of the technology, the Bear Dog. It's a wordplay. This is an iPad-sized radar. This device is designed to detect polar bears. In some parts of the world, polar bears spend more and more time near human compounds looking for food. They sometimes encounter people, and it doesn't end well. A bear dar can be used to prevent such incidents. Since their prime hunting ground starts to melt, polar bears visit towns and dig trash dumpsters. The portable radar unit warns residents that a bear is nearby. When a person wants to get out of their house, they would know if the area is safe or not. How does it work? Well, the package consists of a radar and a camera. It either needs Wi-Fi or a network connection to transfer the data to a server and, from there, to a computer or a phone. Here are some more wild animal safety tips. What will happen if you come face to face with a bear? I know it sounds impossible, but don't run or try to climb a tree. You should stay calm and slowly back away. Don't turn your back on the animal. Act as if you're the predator rather than the prey. Some sources say that if a bear makes contact with you, lie on the ground and play possum. Cover your neck with your hands and your face with your elbows. In that position, you'd think that an eternity has passed. But stay like that for some more time as the bear might try to sniff you. If you get up too early, the bear can get interested in you again. If things go south and it tries to bite you, reply with all you've got. The basic principle is to give animals some space to leave. If you see a snake, move back. If it's a moose, again, give it some space. The moose warns you to leave them alone by tossing their head or smacking their lips. If it comes after you, then run. Try to put a tree between yourself and the animal while running. Squirrels might look cute, making you want to feed them, but don't forget, they're still wild animals. Plus, it's their territory. For the same reason, you shouldn't walk along the trail at night. You can't know for sure what to expect. Follow these rules and enjoy your time and beautiful scenery. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.